Hey everyone, welcome back to White Sparrow Living, Luke 12, 6. I'm Wendy and I'm so happy you're here. Today we're doing about five or six, I can't remember how many. <laughs> how many did I put in here? I don't know, but we're doing some Dollar Tree DIYs for your spring and Easter home decor. If this is your first time stopping by, welcome, and I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button down below, as well as the little bell right next to it so that you can be notified every time I upload a brand new video. If you like these projects, don't forget to give them a thumbs up, comment, let me know what you think, and now, without further ado, let's get started. For our first Dollar Tree DIY, I'm using two pie pans, a glass bowl, a shower curtain ring, some jute twine, and then I found this plastic bell cloche in the garden area at the front of my Dollar Tree. It's super flimsy, but it's going to work perfectly for this project. So as always, we're going to start by getting everything that we're going to be painting ready by taking all the stickers off. And this glass bowl, it has a lid. I love things that have lids, but I'm going to be taking that off as well. And then to show you exactly how we're going to build this, I'm going to have my glass bowl upside down and then I'll put my two pie tins together. My cloche will go on top and then my ring will go into the little holes that are at the top of my bell cloche. And that'll all make sense in a second. So I'm going to start with my multi-purpose cement that I get from the Dollar Tree as well and I'm going to stagger some lines on the lip of my pie tin and then I'm going to put some hot glue in between those lines so that those two don't mix. The hot glue is for the immediate hold and the cement will be for the permanent hold. And then I'll place my second tin on top and then once I have it looking like a perfect UFO I'm going to take my sanding sponge and sand that down and then that way my chalk paint will have a surface to adhere to a little better. So I'm using my chalk paint in white and once I get that painted I'm going to paint also my bowl on the outside and I'm giving both of these a couple of coats. So in the meantime I wanted to show you this super cutie patootie little gadget that my daughter made for me using some air clay or something. I can't even remember what it was but I'll link it in the description box below. But I thought this was so cute. It's totally functional. I'm using it every single day now and it's such a thoughtful gift. So now I'm going to take some jute twine and start Start wrapping it around my shower curtain ring and I'm going to start at one end and go all the way around to the other. You can use some hot glue to get it started and then it's go time after that. You can just wrap it really quickly but I want to leave that opening open so that I can put it into the top of my cloche once I get to that point. Again that'll make sense in a minute. So at the top of my cloche, there's this little vent that you can open and close to give your plants air. I guess apparently plants need oxygen, <laughs> but I didn't want that to stay black. I wanted it to match my base of my cloche, so I'm going to paint that white as well. I just pulled off the washer using my Cricut spatula and then it came apart pretty easily. So now I'm going to give this a wood look using my chippy brush and I'm taking my chalk paint in white, truffle, and hazelnut and then a little bit of antique wax and I'm just mixing those all together and using kind of a dry brush to give it that wood look but I do end up making it a little bit darker in the end it's really pretty this way too and whatever you do to your pie pan do it to your bowl as well I kind of like doing them separately but sometimes it's easier if you put the piece together first so that you have the same look both on the bottom and the top but that's totally up to you so after I get this all painted I just decide to use some white to give it that powdery look and it is really pretty like this but I'm always changing my mind so I do end up changing it but you have creative license to do whatever you like and whatever suits your fancy. So now I'm going to put my vent piece back onto the top of my cloche and then stick that plastic washer on the underside of it and I'm going to have the holes be open so that I can take my shower curtain ring and remember we left it open so we could stick it through there and then I'll take some hot glue and put it right on the underside of my cloche so that the ring will stick to it and then that becomes our handle. So 
So now it's time to assemble our bottom part and I'm just taking my bowl and placing it on the bottom of my pie pans and then marking it out in the center. I'm really bad about getting things centered but I hit this one pretty well. So I'll take my multi-purpose cement again and my hot glue and attach it right on the bottom of my pie tins. And then once that's attached, I'm gonna flip it over and then place my cloche right on top. And it's perfect because the lip of the cloche fits exactly on top of the lip of the pie pan. And then now I'm gonna take some more of my chalk paint and make it a little bit darker. And then it's time to start making the goodies for under the cloche. So I gathered a bunch of fun stuff from all around my craft room and I'm going to start by using some small styrofoam eggs and I'm just poking a skewer into each of those so that I can paint them and twist them and get them all covered and I'm using my chalk paint again and then after I paint them all white I'm going to go back in with my celery and moss chalk paint and just kind of get them blended and have that pretty green color. I always have an idea in my head of what I want it to look like. Usually it doesn't turn out exactly and you know I change my mind or something doesn't look right so I just play with things. But this one actually turned out exactly what I had in my brain. I found this really cute bird that you'll see in a second at the Dollar Tree. It was the last one there but it was also broken. But I knew I loved him so much and he was so pretty I had to get him anyway for a buck twenty-five. <laughs> but he's so pretty inside of here so after i have all of my eggs painted in different shades i always also paint more than i think i'll need because i can use them in other projects so i'm going to take some brown tones and put it on a paintbrush and add some water and then take a pen or whatever another paintbrush whatever you have and flick some little specks on my little eggs and get those all nice and speckled and then i took a teeny tiny little clay pot from the dollar tree and and an old book and just started tearing off little pieces and then I used my Mod Podge and a paintbrush to get those pieces attached to the bottom part of my pot. So then for the top of my pot, I'm just going to take some burlap trim and hot glue that all the way around. Then I took some floral foam and hot glued that to the top of my pie tin. And then I took a Dollar Tree Bible mini version. <laughs> and I'm just going to open that up and shove it into that floral foam. And then I took a big popsicle stick from Walmart and cut off both of the ends because I didn't want to glue the Bible. And so I'm just going to pop that into the floral foam and that'll keep my pages open and my moss is going to cover that all up. So the first thing I did was take some of that moss to make a little nest for my eggs and then I'll set that aside and do the covering using my hot glue over the top of that floral foam and covering the sticks. And because this is a cloche and you'll be able to see all the way around, I want to make sure that I address the back side of the cloche also. And then that way if you set it on a coffee table where it can be seen from all sides, it'll look pretty no matter where you look. So I wanted my little clay pot to kind of sit up a little bit and in order to do that I cut off the front part of my floral foam and glued it down kind of at an angle and then just started applying my moss all over the place. And then you'll see in a second I'm going to prop my clay pot up and then stick some more moss underneath it so that it's facing kind of upwards. So now I'm going to take my eggs and hot glue those into the little nest there. And then it's time to put my beautiful little birdie after I mended him a little bit and put him right on top of that pot. And then I'm going to add some eucalyptus from the Dollar Tree by pulling off a couple of those stems and just popping them into that floral foam. And there's enough moss on there that it'll hold it in place as well. And later I am going to add some baby's breath from Walmart just to make it a little bit lighter. 
So then I have these Dollar Tree stickers that are of keys and locks and I didn't want the pink little gem on there and so I just pulled that off. They're sticky on the back but if you put a little baby powder on the back then it will lose that stickiness. So I took a key and a lock and threaded those on to some jute twine and then tied a knot and then I took three one inch wood beads and threaded those onto that and then tied it to the side of my shower curtain ring at the top of my cloche. And then once I add that final baby's breath as my sweet friend Linda at Faith Chick 777 DIY by Design says, this project is complete. <laughs> And here it is all finished and I just love all things cloches but I really love what's inside of this one. I'm so glad I got that bird even though he was a little wounded and didn't look like he had much of a chance but <laughs> it just goes to show you even a broken wing can always be fixed. But I love how this turned out and I hope you like it too. Today I'm so excited to be collaborating with my sweet friend Linda over at Faith Chick 777 DIY by Design. And here's a little sneak peek of her projects today. And I have said it before, this girl has mad crafting skills and her work is just impeccable. She's such a special friend and sister in Christ. She also does some amazing Jesus projects too. And she even leaves some good word at the end of her videos. So go check her out. I love her and I hope you like her too. <laughs> For this Dollar Tree DIY, I'm using the outer part of three wood drawers, some wooden dowels, three large styrofoam eggs, and some puffy dot stickers. And the first thing I'm going to do is just use my hands and pull off all of that texture that's on the outside of the eggs. I don't even know what they are. They're like tiny little straws or something. So they're embedded into the styrofoam. And then I'm gonna take my puffy dots and using some hot glue, I'm gonna make one large cross and then two smaller ones. And then I'll take my dowels and pop it into the styrofoam egg and then start painting them completely white using my Waverly chalk paint. So now I'm going to stain my boxes and I just used some antique wax and some mineral and mix those together and then I'm just going to paint it onto my boxes and then wipe it off with a paper towel. And you can make this as light or as dark as you want to but I'm going to be writing on these with a white pen so I do want it to be a little bit dark and make sure you get the edges and I actually painted down the walls of the inside of my boxes just in case anything peeked out but I'm going to also fill it with some moss so you won't really see it but just in case so then I'm going to also do the same thing with my dowels and then I'm going to take that same mixture and using a dry brush effect I'm going to highlight those crosses and just go over it lightly with my paintbrush. So now that my stain is completely dry, I'm going to take a pencil and freehand the scripture. Behold, on the first box, I make all on the second box and then things new on the third box. And I'm putting it all towards the bottom of my boxes and I'm just using a cursive writing and I used a paint pen to go over it once I had that down. And then on my first box on the side, I wrote the Old Testament scripture Isaiah 43:19, which is the prophetic scripture that says, 
see I am doing a new thing. And then on the third box on the right side, I put the fulfillment scripture, which is Revelation 21 5 that says, and he who was seated on the throne said, behold, I am making all things new. So that was obviously Jesus. And of course, the Old Testament is the foretelling of the coming Messiah, which is Jesus. And then the New Testament fulfills all of the Old Testament prophecy. See how that works? <laughs> And then once all of that's dry, I'm going to take some more floral foam and pop that into each of my boxes, add some moss, and then poke my dowels into that floral foam, and it's done. And here it is all finished and I got a little ahead of myself and forgot to tell you to cut your two side dowels down so that they're a little bit lower and the middle cross which is Jesus is a little bit taller but I love how simple and clean this is it's just such a good message and the true reason for the Easter season I love it and I hope you like it too For this Dollar Tree DIY, I'm using a muffin pan, some moss, the outer ring from one of those 3D wreath forms, six plastic eggs, and a chalkboard tag. And so the first thing I'm going to do is take my stickers off and get ready to paint this baby. And I'm just using my Waverly White chalk paint. So all the same steps when we first start. So I'm just going to paint this and I gave it two coats. And then while that's drying, I'm going to take my eggs and I didn't realize, but these are actually wood eggs that somebody had gifted to me. So just use your plastic eggs. That's what I thought these were, but I'm going to take a purple highlighter. It doesn't have to be a highlighter, but just maybe a purple pin of some sort. This is just what I had on hand and I'm going to make a big initial on each of my eggs. I'm doing the six covenants that are found in the Bible. So on the first one, I made a big A in my purple, and then I took a black Sharpie and wrote Adam in cursive right across that big initial. And then on another one, I'm going to do Moses and Abraham and David and Noah, and then finally Jesus. And these are the six covenants. You've heard probably that Jesus is the new covenant. And then once I get all of those done, I'm going to write the scripture on the back of the egg that corresponds with the covenant of that particular person. And this is a really good way to teach your kids or grandkids about the Bible and what a covenant really means and what it is and how this beautiful story of salvation history corresponds with the season of Easter. So now I'm going to distress my muffin pan and I'm using the method where you take some cinnamon and add some Mod Podge to it. There's a lot of ways to do this, but I'm just doing it the easy way. If you don't have antique wax or brown paint, you can just go into your kitchen and pull out that cinnamon. Plus it smells really good and offsets that stinky smell from the Mod Podge. But anyway, I'm going to go around all of the corners and on the insides of the openings and get that all nice and rusty looking. Now I'm gonna take that piece of wire and I cut it with my wire cutters. I have the little tabbies on the sides that was gonna keep that inside, but when I pulled it, the little weld spot at the middle of my wreath was at the top, so it broke right in half. So if you do this and you have one of these wreath forms, 
just make sure that little welded spot is not on the side where you cut. So I just bent the ends with my pliers and then poked it into those holes so that they would stay and that becomes our handle. So now I'm going to take some jute twine and tie a knot at the end and then instead of wrapping it completely I just made it really loose and kind of I don't know twiggy looking and then I'm going to take some burlap ribbon and do the same thing with that and just kind of let it have some loopy loops and give it some more texture and I just think it looks a little more natural and pretty. And then once I get it the way I want I'll tie knots on both of the ends. And then I'm going to take my chalkboard tag and I'm first going to use a white paint pen and I'm going to write in the word covenant and then using a white gel pen, I looked up the definition of covenant on dictionary.com and just wrote that in on my tag and then I'm going to tie that on to one end of my handle. And then I filled all of the little openings with some more moss. We're using a lot of moss today. <laughs> and then I'm going to place my eggs in each of those little openings. And I put them in order chronologically. So I started with Adam and then ended up with Jesus. And you may have heard before that Jesus is the new Adam. So he's right there with his buddy. And then I'm going to add on the other side of my handle this perky bow that I made in another video. And it's done. And here it is all finished and I just think this is so stinking sweet. I love how the purple behind the names just really stands out like a monogram. You can see I've used again my plunger handle cross that I made in a mystery box DIY. I'll have that video linked as well but I love this and I hope you like it too. For this super cinchy Dollar Tree DIY, I'm using three glass decanters, three bouncy balls, and some faux leather ribbon. And all I'm going to do on this, oh, why do I always show you me taking the stickers off? Well, that is the hardest part of this project. <laughs> so I'm going to take my bouncy balls, and I had to do this project pretty quick before the grandkids saw these, or they would have taken them from me. But I'm just going to paint them all white with my Waverly chalk paint in white. And I used some insides of some spools to set them on, and I'll just paint half of them at one time. And then once that dries, I'll turn them over and paint the other side. So now using my black Sharpie pen, I'm going to write sweet tea on one of the decanters and then I'll write lemonade on another. And what was the third one? Oh, fruit juice on the third one. I went over it twice because it wasn't all the way super dark black when I did it just the one time. So again, I'm using my own handwriting. If you don't like your handwriting, print it out and put it on the inside of the glass and then you can just trace right over it. But if you do make a mistake, all you have to do is use some acetone, wipe it off. It came off super, super easy. So these are going to be stoppers for these decanters and they're pretty heavy. But one thing I did notice is that it was a little bit hard to get it out without something to grab onto. So I took some of that faux leather and then cut those down four inches and then hot glued them on both sides on top of my ball. And those become our stoppers and they're now easy to pull out. So I wanted to put them on top of a tray. So I'm using this Dollar Tree long tray. Again, I'm going to paint this all completely white and I wanted it to stand up a little bit. So I found these snowmen wood shapes pieces from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to paint those white as well and then hot glue and super glue them onto all four corners of my tray and then to distress it I'm going to use my antique wax and then paint around the edges with a pretty light hand just to make that beaded detail show a little more and then on my legs I'm going to make those a little bit darker for contrast and then I'm going to take some more of that faux leather and I cut those pieces down to seven inches hot glued it on the bottom of my tray to make them look like handles. Of course these aren't going to be super sturdy so don't use these as actual handles. <laughs> 
So I just filled up the decanters and here it is all finished. And I just love how simple and modern farmhouse looking these turned out. I forgot to mention that I did cover the stoppers with some Waverly matte varnish and it is non-toxic just in case it touches your drinks, but I love making functional projects. And I also love using trays in my home decor so I wanted to make this one up using the color purple for Lent. And my goddaughter's little son, Keegan, we call him our grand godson, but he made me this special tile all by himself a few years ago. So I set that on a plate holder, added a couple of Dollar Tree candles, and then tied two lavender stems from Walmart with this pretty ribbon from the Dollar Tree, added a Bible in the back, and you have a sweet little vignette for spring and Lent. I love it and I hope you like it too. For this DIY, I'm using a tray that I got from a sweet viewer and I think she got it from the 99 cent store and this is the easiest project ever. I'm just going to paint the inside with my white chalk paint and I'll leave the outside in the original galvanized metal finish. And I did that so that number one, I wouldn't have to paint around the little handles, but also because I found a super pretty decal at the Dollar Tree, but it did have some silver in it. And I thought that it would match perfectly with the galvanized metal. And now I think it reads more like metal rather than the silver. So I just stuck that in the middle of the tray and it's done. It literally took longer for the paint to dry <laughs> than the time it took to make the entire thing. But I think it is so pretty and it is perfect for your springy decor. And again, it's super functional. I love it and I hope you like it too. I hope you enjoyed all these projects. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, comment. Also, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram. All those links are down below in the description box. Don't forget to go give Linda some love. Her video will be linked below and on my end screen. I hope everyone makes the most of this season of Lent as we prepare for the resurrection on that glorious Sunday morning. I hope everyone has a blessed day and remember to always be the light. Bye!